It's no mystery, but the Army is struggling to get people to join the Army as well as people to stay in the Army. And we got some things that I personally feel like the Army should change to hopefully improve that, but also some things they should not change in an attempt to try to get more people to join the Army or stay in the Army. That video starts right now. The Army has been trying to do a lot of changes in recent history to try to improve their retention, to get people to want to join. Things like, you know, relaxing hair standards for women. Uh, they've added the, some new policies for like tattoos to little, be a little bit more lenient with that. And several other things they've kind of slowly tried to incorporate to try to get people to be more interested in joining the Army as well as stay in the Army. Some of the things might help a little bit, but probably not enough to really make a huge difference. And I don't even know if these things are a big enough difference to really kind of fix things, but maybe, just maybe, it's a step in the right direction. Before we dive into my thoughts, make sure you subscribe to the channel, make sure you're hitting that thumbs up, make sure you're commenting down below to help out the YouTube algorithm. So let's get into the things that I feel like the Army should and should not change. First one, something I feel like the Army should change, and that is to relax some on the grooming standards when not deployed or in a training environment. The Army has some pretty strict standards as far as how your hair can look. You can't have a beard unless you have a shaving profile or a religious ex exemption. And I feel like maybe relaxing on some of those standards could help improve morale to maybe make it to where some people would be more willing to want to stay in the Army. I'm not saying that this is the definite reason what's going to change things, but I definitely think it could boost morale to where it makes it to where people are maybe a little bit have less of a reason of why they want to get out because a lot of times people want to get the hell out of the army because they want to grow beards, they want to grow their hair long, they don't want to have to be, you know, told to always get a haircut every single week, they don't want to be told that they have to shave every single day, and maybe that's one of the reasons why they just kind of get tired of things and they all kind of build up and they want to get out of the army. I feel like the army is kind of going that way with at least the hair because I have seen a lot of soldiers that do get away with a lot more than like you used to over the years, right? Maybe just leadership being a little bit more relaxed, but I think officially making it some kind of standard to where if you're not deployed, you're not in some kind of training environment, maybe relax a little bit on the hair standards to still keep it professional. I'm not saying, you know, go growing super long hair for men, but maybe you can relax a little bit to where you can have a little bit more hair to work with to style it. And I'm not talking about, you know, dyeing your hair crazy colors and spiking it up, you know, a couple inches tall or whatever, but a little bit more relaxed than what it currently is. Maybe not so strict to where you have to keep it super short on the sides at all times. Maybe you can grow it a little bit longish on the sides to maybe blend in a little bit more with like the local populace. And of course the beards. I feel like a lot of men would be super stoked if they grow beards in the army because a lot of other branches, they allow that as far as like other countries anyways, not US branches, but other branches as far as other countries do allow that, just the United States does not. I remember talking recently to a Canadian uh, soldier who was surprised, you know, about how the army is pretty strict on hair and beards where they're able to get away with quite a bit as far as the hair and they're allowed to grow beards as well and even fairly long beards as well if they want to. Now, I get it. I know, I know a lot of people make the argument about pro mask. Well, easy fix. When you go to a deployment, you go to the field, you go on certain other kind of training events, you got to shave, right? No big deal. You got to shave it all off. You can't sit there and just grow a beard forever type of thing. But when you're in garrison, you're not in a training environment or whatever, let them grow that beard. Maybe they don't have to shave every single day. You know, keep it still nice and neat, but they don't have to necessarily shave every single day. Maybe something short like I got would be something appropriate or maybe even a little bit longer than this as well. But, you know, in garrison, a lot of them have beards, good deployed, or you go on a training environment or some other kind of specific training where you need to be clean shaved, then sure, you gotta suck it up, you gotta shave. Now, something that the Army should not relax on to get people to want to stay in the Army or to join the Army is they should not relax on the physical fitness standards. That also goes for like height and weight too. So physical fitness standards as well as height and weight, they should not be relaxing on that stuff to try to get more people to easily be able to pass the fitness standards or easily be able to join the Army, be a little bit more overweight than, you know, currently allowed type of thing. They should not relax on that kind of stuff. We do still gotta maintain some kind of fit military, right? We gotta be able to have people that are in good enough shape that if a situation comes about where they have to drag a casualty out of the kill zone, they're fit enough to be able to do that. They need to be fit enough that if they're wearing full on gear and they need to rush from this vehicle over to that vehicle or whatever the case is, they're fit enough to be able to do that without freaking passing out because they're so exhausted from just going a short distance. So the physical fitness standards need to still be something that proves the soldier is in good enough shape 
to be fit for combat. I know with the ACFT doing all these crazy changes, and I understand you gotta change it to make it work better, to be more applicable for you know different individuals and different things, but still do not relax it to the extent that people are not in good enough physical shape that they can't do their job or do certain other kind of things that need to be done in a combat type of environment. Because even though you might have an individual that works behind a desk, they still could have the chance of being in a scenario where maybe they were on convoy from one location to another location, vehicle got hit by an IED, by an ambush or something like that, and they need to be able to be able to you know, help casualties out or move equipment or do whatever they gotta do to still stay alive and keep all their fellow soldiers alive. And you gotta be fit enough to be able to still be able to kind of keep up with that. Same with like the weight standards. You don't relax it to where you're like, oh, okay, now you can be a little overweight or whatever the case might be. You know, you still gotta keep that, maintain that fitness. So I don't feel like the army should relax on the fitness or the weight standards in order to accompany or to facilitate other individuals to be able to join into the military, into the army. Now, something that they should do is make better living conditions for single soldiers. That is one of the big ones that I remember, especially that soldiers want to get the hell out of the army because they're single, they're sick of living in the barracks, they're sick of that lifestyle of living in the barracks where your leadership, your NCOs, whoever is constantly checking on you, making sure that you're living well and doing barracks inspections and all the other crap that comes to live in the barracks. Sure, the barracks have improved quite a bit over the years, but nonetheless, it is still very restrictive of what you can and can't do in those barracks. And it still very much feels like you kind of live with your parents and you have a lot of really strict rules compared to if you were a civilian living in your own apartment. I feel like is what they should do is one, either just give all soldiers BAH and they can go get their own apartment. Maybe for single soldiers, it's a smaller amount where it's just enough to be able to get maybe a one bedroom apartment off post or maybe just improve the barracks. Probably improving the barracks would be a little bit more cost effective type of thing compared to just paying all these soldiers BAH and everything for their environment. So it might be better just to renovate the barracks better, even though they are getting improvements, but they're still not quite there where they should be. Because I think the barracks should be more closer to like a one bedroom apartment. It should not be the way it is currently. It should be more like you're living in a one bedroom apartment. You don't have all these crazy room inspections. You don't have all these crazy times where you know NCOs and everybody else checking on you. Sure, that can cause problems, but that's gonna be the responsibility of the soldiers. Opening things up like that is gonna improve morale and sure, it's also gonna probably increase you know the dirtiness of some individuals, but hey, maybe have stricter consequences for those types of things. Maybe if there are people complaining, saying private so-and-so's room smells really horrible and you can smell it from the hallway and when they open up their door, you can see trash piled up inside of there. There's a way that they can form, you know file a formal complaint with like, kind of like the, the landlord, you know, the barracks manager or something like that. And then, you know, if that is the situation, maybe someone has to go check on that. And then, hey, tell a soldier, hey, this, this crap needs to be cleaned up. Otherwise you're getting Article 15, right? So maybe make stricter standards then, you know, if that's gonna be the case to prevent soldiers from just living like farm animals, from living totally horribly and possibly getting sick or getting other people sick or whatever the case is, maybe just have stricter standards, but nonetheless, it still needs to feel more like an apartment complex and not like it feels like currently being in the, in the barracks in the army. I think that would help morale. It would probably even save some soldiers from trying to rush into marriage to get the hell out of the barracks. And overall, I think improve things to where people would not be so discouraged to want to stay in the army if they're single type of thing or rush into marriage. It would improve the, the lifestyle of those single soldiers. Now, before we continue on with some more, Mother's Day is coming up. It's right around the corner and Grunt Style can hook you up for either you, maybe a loved one of yours, your mom, your wife, whatever the case is, they actually have some pretty awesome Mother's Day themed shirts going on right now. Mrs. Chaos got it hooked up with some awesome Mother's Day shirts that are pretty cool, have some cool themes to them for a mother type of theme that she has been actually enjoying, she really likes them. So if you have someone that would fit into that category that you could hook them up for Mother's Day with some amazing Mother's Day themed shirts, check out my link down in the description box down below. If it's your first time purchasing from Grunt Style, you can utilize my promo code CHAOSARMY and save 25% off your very first order. So check out that link, get a Mother's Day shirt, maybe some other awesome Grunt Style themed shirts while you're at it as well. Pick up something for yourself or for another friend or whatever. Check them out, link down in the description box down below. Getting back into things, something the Army should not relax on, and that is the education standards. The Army kind of toyed with it slightly, real, real super briefly with saying that they were gonna drop the requirements for a high school diploma and GED and just allow people to just join with no, no education basically. 
the Army quickly changed their mind on that. I'm sure there's some people out there that would have loved that and would have been awesome and would have conveniently helped you join the Army and sure maybe it would have improved you know, enlistment, but maybe for the wrong reasons. So when the Army first announced that originally, it was like maybe a week that they kind of had that going on and then they were like, whoa, 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 never mind. This is a stupid idea, this is horrible. You gotta have a GED. You gotta have at least a high school diploma or a GED to be able to join. There is ways where people can join without a GED or high school diploma. It's just a really small percentage of people that they allow to do that. So it's really, really, really difficult to get that. But definitely, I don't feel like the Army should go and just completely drop it to where you're like, yeah, you don't need to have a high school diploma or a GED to be able to join the Army. I'm not saying that there's not people out there that are smart in that kind of scenario, because sure, I have actually heard of people, and I think I've even probably met some people too, where they're pretty smart and they didn't, you know, didn't get a high school diploma, didn't get a GED, they got bored with high school, didn't feel like it was challenging enough to them, and they wanted to kind of just get the hell out and kind of start their life and challenge themselves a little bit more. So there are some cases, sure, we're probably, you know, there are very educated, smart people that didn't finish high school, didn't go get a GED, but then there's also some of those individuals that really just are not committed to things. They do not like that structure. They do not like that commitment to, to school and the education system, and they'd rather just kind of do things on their own. And those people are probably not a good fit for the military or for the army because you gotta have structure. You go into basic training, AIT, your unit and everything like that, and you gotta be committed to things. You can't be someone that just wants to be a loner. You gotta be a team player. You gotta be willing to accept the structure and go with the flow of things. And so those individuals that maybe drop out of high school because they don't like that structure, they don't want to be controlled by somebody, they wanna be more free, would probably not be a very good fit for the military in the first place. Those individuals could have a higher chance of possibly wanting to try to quit while in basic training, trying to quit while in AIT or OSIT, maybe even trying to get the hell out of the army as soon as they get through the unit because they're like, well, this is a big, this is probably a big mistake and uh, I don't really like the structure here. I kind of want to be more of a lone wolf type of person. So for that reason, you probably still need to stick with high school diploma or GED. You're still going to probably run into some people that are still that way, even though, and they just kind of push through high school, push through getting that GED. But nonetheless, you still got to have that basic structure, I feel like. Now, something the Army should do to help improve people's joining the Army as well as staying in the Army, increase pay. Now, maybe to a certain caveat though. A lot of times people complain about, you know, joining the military, joining the army and the pay being really low. And sure, it's an entry level thing, so it kind of has to be to a certain extent. But I think if you're going to do something like improve people wanting to stay in the army, then maybe at a certain point in their army career, that pay jumps up dramatically. I would say personally, maybe something like after eight years, you've done your full on commitment. You don't have any IRR commitment or anything else like that. The pay raise jump from you being in for the army for seven years, going to eight years is all of a sudden a pretty big jump that's a lot more enticing for you to want to stay in the army. I don't feel like it should be a thing initially. It should not be a thing for you know individuals at two years, at four years, even five or six years type of thing. You want to improve the longevity of soldiers. Keep these people that are getting the experience in the army to learn how to do things, to be proficient at their job, and get those people who are proficient at their job to want to stay in the army for long term, for longer terms than just simply the minimum of three, four, five, even eight years, I guess. Because then after eight years, you give them the incentive of, hey, now that money you were making is gonna jump up dramatically. Now you're actually making a really good living because you've been in the army for eight plus years and we wanna retain you. We wanna keep you because you're very knowledgeable, you have a lot of experience and we're gonna show our appreciation to you and the value that you offer to the United States Army or even the military really in general by bumping up your pay by quite a bit. So I think that would be a good idea. Not for the lower years, the lower rankings, but individuals that have been in the army for eight plus years do a pretty good size pay raise to where it's actually enticing to want to stay in the army. You're like, holy crap, this is making pretty good money, better money than I can be making on the civilian side. I think I'm gonna stay in the army then. Now, one last thing, and that is something that the army should not do to try to increase soldiers from joining the army and staying in the army, and that is lighten up on soldiers in basic training or even in OSIT. I know that's a little bit of what the army is kind of trying to do where they are lightening up a little bit on you know basic with the whole shark attack kind of going away and then now the 100 yards and other things they're trying to do to try to make people want to join the army part of that is we're in an all volunteer army it's not like the vietnam days or you know days of having the draft where people were forced into it these are people that are volunteer to go through it and they don't want to volunteer necessarily to get yelled at and i get that but at the same time you gotta make sure you're getting people that are strong-minded, that can handle the stress, 
handle working under pressure. That way, if they fall into the situation where they go on a deployment, they're in a combat zone type of thing, they can work under pressure. So to a certain extent, you do still have to get treated like crap to at least a point. I mean, maybe there are some areas where you could lighten up in some, but for the most part, it does still need to be scary. It needs to be stressful in basic training to make sure you can handle that stress and still operate. The shark attack probably still needs to be a thing. It still needs to be that fear of drill sergeants yelling at you and getting in your face and everything. I don't like the whole part where, you know, drill sergeants are not allowed to really curse at soldiers. Sure, they might still do it behind closed doors when certain other higher ups are, are, are not present, but nonetheless, they're officially not really supposed to do that. They're supposed to look more professional by not cursing at a soldier, but I get it. You know, maybe it doesn't look that professional when you see an individual cursing at you, but it sure as hell is scary when you have that drill sergeant cursing at you. And I think that's the more important thing is that it should be a little bit scary. It should be a little bit stressful to make it to where you know how to operate under stress and you know that you can still kind of perform your tasks under a stressful environment. So lightening up on things to make it more of a training environment and not scary or not stressful would be a horrible idea. So the Army has to be really careful with what they are changing in basic training. If they're going to be changing things to try to make it more appealing to soldiers that want to join, stay in the Army, to come into the military, whatever kind of a thing, they got to be careful not to do so that it loses that value of making sure that someone can work under pressure. You got to have that fear. You got to have a little bit of scariness of basic training. Down in that comment section down below, I know some of you out there have got some thoughts of things that the Army should do or should not do to improve the possibility of someone wanting to join the Army or even staying in the Army. And I'd like to hear from you guys. So make sure you comment down in the comment section down below. Let me know what do you think the Army should do or the Army should not do in order to build new soldiers, bring in new soldiers, as well as retain current soldiers so we can keep that experience in the Army. Now, don't go abandoning the video just yet. I want to make sure that you get everything out of this, so hit that thumbs up. Check out my links down in the description box down below to make sure you're following me on social media to get a little bit more insight into all sorts of things going on. But also, I want you to check out this video. I know you're about to abandon this video and go check out some funny cat video, a movie trailer. Maybe you're going to go watch some other military YouTuber or whatever, but this is the video you need to be checking out right now. So check that out. Thanks for hanging out. I'm Christopher Chaos. See you next time. See ya.